How's it going, everyone? It's Barton Fuzulu here bringing you more Wi-Fi battle action. UU tier against Mustafa. And this guy's awesome. He's in my Discord server. Hint, hint. You guys need to join my Discord. Seriously, it's awesome. <laughs> uh, so let's get ready to rock and roll and let's get this battle started. Again, UU tier. This is my weakest tier. I have like really bad luck in this tier. And I just, I'm not good at predicting. Like, if, if you thought I was bad at predicting an RU, OU, you need to see my predictions in the UU tier. So he's going to start off with this for Alligator. I'm going to start off with my lead ape going for the fake out. This is an awesome uh, Infern ape. Lead ape was like a big Pokemon back in the Diamond and Pearl days. Fake out, close combat, stealth rock, and fire blast holding a focus sash. And the point of it is just to do a fake out to break the opposing Pokemon sash, get your stealth rocks up take heavy damage to where you're in the red and then that activates blaze so you can do some very nice damage with fire blast uh that's just it's, it's it is a suicide lead but it's a fun lead and when it hits like when it works it's just a lot of fun you're not going to sweep a whole team with it but it can do some damage so i'm going to go ahead and go for the close combat two times in a row knocking the fur alligator out of the match and thanks to my focus sash i mean that's just awesome this was this is a fun lead i, I like this lead it's one of my favorites so most of I was going to go back out with Altaria, and I'm going to kind of just let him take it here. I don't really have much of anything uh, to do with Infernape. Close combat's not going to do anything. Uh, Fire Blast, unless I get a burn, and it is doing a little bit extra damage, but unless I get a burn, you know. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this opportunity to get my Stealth Rocks up either way, because I didn't do that, which you're supposed to do. You're supposed to do Fake Out Stealth Rocks. I didn't do that. I wanted to be aggressive and put that for Alligator down. Uh, Earthquake is definitely going to knock my Infernape right out of the match. Which sucks, but, I mean, that's what he does. He got his Stealth Rocks up. He did a Fake Out. He took out a for Alligator. His job is done. So, good good game, Infernape. That was awesome. So now, with Infernape down, I'm going to go ahead and go with my own for Alligator, who I have very, very mixed results with. <laughs> I'm going to go for the Dragon Dance. I don't see him doing too much of anything to for Alligator. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> Uh, I should have gone, I don't know if I had Scizor, I don't really remember. I should have gone with Scizor, but I decided to go with for Alligator, who's holding his, uh, he's holding the Z Crystal, the Water EMZ or whatever. And I'm going to go for the Ice Punch after a Dragon Dance, and it's not going to take Altaria out of the match. Altaria actually takes it fairly well, fairly well excuse me. Return is going to come back to knock out my for Alligator. So both of our, both of our for Alligators are down. I'm two Pokemon down. I got a problem here. And I think I do have a Scizor, actually. Uh... I'm gonna go with my Manetric, my Mega Manetric, getting a getting an Intimidate off, but he's gonna switch, expecting the Hidden Power Ice, and going with that Ice Ice Baby Mamoswine, who is going to just laugh at this Hidden Power Ice. Uh, even if I used Overheat, it's not gonna do too much damage to Mamoswine because of that thick fat ability. So fighting and steel attack, fighting attacks, steel attacks, water attacks, grass attacks, those are just the way to get around Mamoswine because fire and, well, ice, yeah, ice is affected by thick fat, so no wonder why I didn't do anything. But anyways, fire attacks won't even do too much to it. I'm going to go with my Scizor, and he's going to go with the Earthquake, which that shouldn't do too much damage to Scizor, and Scizor is just going to kind of scare Mamoswine away because he does not want to lose it to a bullet punch. Mamoswine is just too important right now this early in the match. He's going to go into his his own scissor and i saw the switch coming so i'm gonna go ahead and go for the u-turn i should have actually gone for the knockoff but i went for the u-turn just to get some uh you know some pivot tempo there and with his own his own scissor in, i'm gonna go back into mega manetric getting him getting an intimidate and that's just gonna lower this baby's attack and i don't gotta worry too much about scissor now and i'm gonna also kind of scare it away because well he doesn't want to take a flamethrower or an overheat well an overheat my my uh my uh, Manetric knows over here. Going into Raikou, who is a RU Pokemon, but he could rock the UU. RU Pokemon tend to do okay a few tiers up. I mean, Machamp does okay in the OU tier if you use him correctly. And, you know, I've proven that. Other people have proven that too. Uh, I'm nom 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 on that berry to get his health back up. So that's kind of not too big of a deal. That's a weird uh, Raikou. I think the Raikou that I have in the RU tier, I haven't used it yet, but I think it's holding a Z-move. Now I'm going to go ahead and go for the Volt Switch. I knew I outsped it. I just went for the Volt Switch to get some residual damage on it, getting some Pivot Tempo back. And I'm going to go into my Crocodile, holding a Choice Scarf, but he's going to substitute, which that sucks because, well, now i got to break through this Earthquake. 
and I'm going to have to take two turns. I'm going to have to break through this substitute. Excuse me. I'm fighting a cold also, so if I sound weird, that's why. Earthquake is going to knock the substitute out. I'd rather knock the Raikou out. But uh, yeah, substitute's gone. Raikou's back, and Hidden Power Ice. I know it's not going to take my Crocodile out of the match, but it just sucked that you know I had to take that turn to get rid of the sub and even take the damage in the first place. Earthquake is going to knock the Raikou out of the match this time, getting me a Moxie buff, but he still has a lot of po well, not a lot of Pokemon. He still has that Mamoswine, actually, and Mamoswine gets Ice Shard. Uh, Crocodile's weak to Ice Shard. I'm pretty sure I'm in Ice Shard range, so yeah, I'm going to get Crocodile out of here. I'm not going to let him take it, uh, which sucks, because I could have, I would have loved to have just wreaked Havoc with a Choice Scarf Crocodile, just Earthquake and Moxie, Earthquake and Moxie. I'm going to go into my, uh, into my Scizor. Sure enough, I saw the Ice Shard coming. That's not going to do anything to Scizor, and I thought he was going to switch here. He took a big risk, because I went for the U-turn, I think, or no, I went for the Superpower. And he took a huge risk not switching out. Earthquake is going to knock my Scizor out of the match, getting a critical hit. And I think I don't think that crit mattered, but that won him the game because Scizor threatened a good amount of his team. And that was, that was actually on me. I should have just gone for the bullet punch. I really did not have anything to fear. So check this out, though. Overheat, thanks to that thick fat on Mamoswine, it, does, it literally does not take it out of the match. It does next to nothing. And he can just take the overheat and knock my Manetric out. So that was the turning point in the match was me just not going for the bullet punch. I should have just gone for it because as I said, the Pokemon that he had left, I had no reason not to go for bullet punch. The only one that he did have to resist it was his own Scizor and that would have just worn it down. He's going to go back into his Scizor as I bring out Blissey, which I don't know why he didn't just keep Mamoswine in. He could have easily taken out Blissey with, uh, Blissey with Mamoswine. Seismic Toss is going to put the scissor at pretty low health, but I'm nom 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 on that berry to get its health back up there. And it's not too big of a deal because, well, it's a scissor against the Blissey. I can't really do much of anything to it. He's gonna go for the roost. So I'm thinking this is a, this scissor had like the same move set as an OU scissor. So I'm wondering if this was his OU scissor and he just took the scissor right off of it because that's kind of what I'm feeling because it had roost, it had like defog. So that was just the feel I got from it. You don't see the this, this Scizor in UU. You usually see it in OU. Uh, and in UU, the reason why you see more like physically choice banded, physically uh, physically addressed, I guess, Scizors is because, well, he can do that in UU. In OU, Scizor can be aggressive, but with all the Pokemon running around that just counter him, like Lando, Magirna, Pokemon like that, there's really no room for him to, to get away with stuff like that. Bullet Punch is going to take my Crocodile out of the match. And it's it's uh, chances, it's situations like that, excuse me, where I wish I had Intimidate. But I like the Moxie Crocodile. It's more fun, or to me it's more fun. But Intimidate does come in handy in situations like that. Plus that would have given me two Pokemon with Intimidate with the uh, Crocodile and then with Manetric. So, oh, oh well though, it, it, it's fine. I just like the, the Moxie on a Crocodile better than, than the Intimidate. Uh, all I have left is Blissey. And in a lot of situations, Blissey's like not usable in UU. I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong. I've had situations where like, because Blissey just completely counters Hydreigon. So I've had situations like that. But good game, Mustafa. I'll get you next time, man. Uh, he's in my Discord server, so I can battle him at any time. Or you can join and battle him yourself. So moving on to the next uh, next match, excuse me, Jerry the Plant Man. We're getting a rematch with Jerry. Uh, he hit me up. He's like, I want to rematch Alpha Zulu because last time, you know, you beat me. I'm like, all right, sure, man. Here, here's your rematch. So going for the rematch with Jerry the Plant Man. Uh, he messaged me on Facebook. For those of you that don't know, he uh, hit me up on my Facebook page, asked me for a battle, joined my Discord, and now here it is. I'm going to lead off with my champ. He's going to lead off with his Infernape. I'm going to switch out. I don't want to lose my champ just yet because my champ does not like physical attacks. I'm going to go with Swampert. And U-turn, he saw the switch coming. <laughs> is not going to do much of anything to Swampert. So it sucked that he saw the switch coming because he can get some Pivot Temple here. Going into his Vaporeon, and Vaporeon is a wall that you just need to look out for. It can be a huge annoyance. And I kept Swampert in because, well, I did not see Vaporeon doing much of anything to it. Boy, was I wrong. I forgot that Vaporeon is usually a Wish user. And Toxic is just going to slowly wear down my Swampert. This is not where you want to be because Swampert lacks recovery outside of Leftovers. He's just slowly going to wear down my Swampert with that Toxic. So that was a bad move on my part.
and I gotta do something here and here it comes the wish the protect he's just gonna keep doing this back and forth and there's really not much I can do about it um, I do think I have I do have a Manetric in this match but I mean if he's smart he's not gonna keep it in against Vapor uh, he's not gonna keep Vaporeon in against it because well why would he and uh, Dynamic Punch is not gonna do much of anything because of that wish well the wish you know came in so now he's just slowly gonna wear down my Machamp who got poisoned and finally he's calling back the Vaporeon bringing in Someone tell me the name of this Pokemon. <laughs> I can't for the life of me remember it. Um, anyways, he's going to bring in this. I know it's Mono Dragon. He's going to bring it in. I switch out. Going in with Manetric. Because, well, I'm not quite sure what he's going to go for here. I do know it has, like, rough skin, rocky helmet, similar to, uh, to Garchomp. And I don't want to just wear down uh, Machamp there. So we're going to go uh, We're gonna go into Manetric, hitting with an Intimidate. I'm going to go for a Volt Switch because I don't think Hidden Power Ice will do the job right off the bat. And I'm just going to go with Swampert because Swampert can, Swampert can comfortably take anything this Pokemon has to offer. But now i got to be careful because I'm pretty much just in wear and tear mode right here. Like He's going to just slowly deal damage to me and the poison is just going to do its job with recover uh, with leftovers just recovering the little bit of health I have left. Swamper does not learn slack off or anything like that, although it kind of would, would be cool if he did. Anyways, I'm going back into Manetric to just hit this Pokemon with another Intimidate and he's going to go for his entry hazards here. Thankfully, did not go for an attack, so Manetric is going to be a little bit safe here. Uh, he's going to withdraw Bendu, I swear I'm going to learn this Pokemon's name, <laughs> and go uh, go right for his Dawn Fan. But he brought his Dawn Fan right into a Hidden Power Ice, and that's going to deal a crap ton of damage to it, because Dawn Fan's special defense is not the best. So he's in range of being KO'd right here. Hidden Power Ice will do the job. He's going to go for the Ice Shard, just to get some residual damage on Manetric. That's understandable, but... It takes it, and Hidden Power Ice is going to put his Dawn Fan right out of the match, giving me a much-needed first blood, taking away those resources there, because that's what Pokemon are. Pokemon battles are about resources. You lose a Pokemon, you start losing ground. Uh, he's going to bring in his Crooked Owl. I'm kind of fearing that it's Choice Scarf, so I'm going to switch out. I don't want to get hit with an Earthquake. Going back into Swampert, just in case. And he's going to go ahead and go for that Earthquake. So maybe it is Choice Scarf. I can't remember. But I think I also remember him holding on to a Rocky Helmet for some reason. So there is that. We do need to be careful. Because, I mean, just when you don't know what a Pokemon's holding, you kind of just got to play around it until you can figure it out and hope for the best. Some people know just right away. And I have no clue how people do that. He's going to go back into that Vaporeon. And, well, wall versus wall here. I don't have any status-inducing moves, which I've thought about getting rid of Roar, because my Swampert does learn Roar. I've thought about getting rid of it for Toxic, just because Toxic is awesome. It's an awesome move to have, especially if you're a wall. You can just take hits and poison your, you know, slowly po uh, poison your opponent to death. Anyways, <laughs> Earthquake is not going to do much of anything to that Vaporeon, and he's going to go for the Wish. He's going to go for the Protect. He's just going to do what Wish Makers do. I'm going to go for the Roar, getting away this Vaporeon. And uh, Crocodile is going to come back out, which I'm perfectly okay with. I got Scald. I can, you know, I can wear and tear this freaking thing down. Uh, he's going to hit me with the Intimidate, which whoop de doo Swampert's not much of a, well, yeah, it's not much of a physical attacker to begin with. But that poison is just doing its damage. Look at that. I'm at 35 health. I'm, I mean, I might as well just let Swampert get taken out at this point. Bringing Vaporeon back in, not wanting to take a Scald. And me being the idiot that I am just fed water to a Vaporeon, restoring its health. And then the wish is going to come true to put it back at full freaking health. So that was just a big number of misplays on me. And finally, I'm going to lose Swamper to the Toxicity. That's a good song. <laughs> Bringing my champ back in against Vaporeon because I'm just, I mean, at this point, screw it. Maybe I can just confuse this guy out and he can hit himself a couple of times, buying me some free turns. And that'll just help me slowly wear down this Vaporeon. It's a bad strategy, I know, but it's the only one I got at this point. He's not going to keep Manetric in against this freaking Pokemon. He's going to switch back out into that Dragon type. And it's going to take a Dynamic Punch here. Uh, Dynamic Punch is going to take it out of the match, though, with it being at that, hell, at that low health. Rough Skin, Rocky Helmet, wearing down my Machamp. So he's two Pokemon down. I might as well be two Pokemon down because, well, Machamp's getting very low and it's poison. Now he's going to bring out that Infernape. 
and he can very easily just finish my champ off with a close combat here. I really have nothing to switch out into. I'm going to go for the bullet punch just to get some residual damage because why not? Kind of like a, a last little screw you before I get taken out. Close combat, knocking my champ out of the match, which that, I mean, I knew that was coming. So it sucks, but I mean, that's, that's how it works. Anyways, going, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go into my Entei and uh, I think maybe I can take this thing out with extreme speed. I'm honestly not quite sure, but I also know Bulldoze. I think I do anyway. He's going to switch though, going to his Vaporeon, because there's not much my Entei can do to a Vaporeon. Extreme speed, doing an okay amount of damage. Not as much as I'd like, but that was an okay amount. I mean, didn't put it in the orange or anything, but, you know. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to switch out my Entei because I got nothing going on right now. I can't touch Vaporeon. He's going to go for the Wish. Who knew? Wish makers are freaking annoying. <laughs> oh, man. Jeez. I use one. I use one. I have a, a Loma Lola or whatever the heck, so I do have a Wish maker. I can understand people's frustration when going against them because they are just frustrating Pokemon. And, uh... They're hard to take down, especially if you like, you know, they're just hard to take down if you don't have anything for them. Really, all I have for this Vaporeon is a Mega Manetric, and he's not going to keep Vaporeon in against that. So I've got to find a way and just corner this freaking Pokemon so that Manetric can do its job. Uh, I went ahead and used the Pivot Tempo from U Turn to bring it in, and he's going to go ahead and go for the Wish again. Now he's going to protect, but. Maybe I can just pressure him out right here. Although he's not going to switch out right away. He's going to put his Vaporeon back at full health. And that's just going to suck. But I'm hoping a Thunderbolt will do the job here. I don't think it will. Vaporeon is bulky. It is one of the bulky of the evolutions next to like Umbreon. But maybe I'll get lucky and Thunderbolt will do the job here. Thunderbolt, he kept it in. Putting it like almost in the red. <laughs> Excuse me. See, I told you I was sick. <laughs> um, so that sucked because I would have loved to have taken it out of the match there. The one time I could have used a critical hit. Uh, now he's just going to go for the wish, going to go for the protect. He, uh, this is just so freaking annoying. I need this Vaporeon out of the freaking match because I need to break through. I need to get through those walls of Jericho and win this battle. Switching Vaporeon out, not wanting to take a loss here. Going in to Infernape and Volt Switch, I should have gone with Thunderbolt, but Volt Switch is not going to take Infernape out of the match. Leaving it in the red, I should have gone for the Thunderbolt, that would have taken it out. But, I can go for the uh, the Bullet Punch here, and just, you know, it's well in Bullet Punch range. And uh, he, But he's going to go for the Mock Punch, I forgot he had that. And Bullet Punch is going to knock the Infernape out of the match. Still, that Mock Punch was a surprise there. That uh, that was not expected, that sucks, because I don't want that much damage on on my uh on my scissor going into his crocodile and intimidate is gonna hurt scissor there but i'm holding a choice band so it doesn't affect me that much but bullet punch on this crocodile it's like a bulky crocodile holding a rocky helmet so that's a weird little build there i think the last time i battled jerry he actually had this so i don't know why this surprised me thinking about it now i've never seen a crocodile that's a wall um i'm gonna go into my haxorus because I think I can set up on this Pokemon, get a Dragon Dance off, and start wrecking. So I'm going to go for it. Dragon Dance, getting my speed to ridiculous levels, my attack at ridiculous levels. If you've seen my Haxorus breakdown or just seen my matches with my matches with Haxorus, then you just know he's an awesome offensive Pokemon. And he's a wall breaker. He can knock down those walls of Jericho. He's going to switch out Crocodile, not wanting to lose it, going into his uh, Heracross and Earthquake is going to do a crap ton of damage to Heracross here. But the only problem is it doesn't do as much as I like. So now i got to go for the Outrage because I don't want to use my Z-Move on this freaking Heracross. So the Outrage is going to take it out of the match. That's a given, but I'm locked in Outrage. And for those of you that don't know, Outrage is probably the strongest Dragon move out there. And it does a crap ton of damage, but the Pokemon that uses it has to use it for three turns and then after three turns it becomes confused so that's why it's unfortunate here <clears throat> excuse me because I took out the the crooked owl I took out the Heracross but Vaporeon is gonna protect and that's gonna make the last outrage moot because now I'm confused my last turn 
or my next turn is at least going to be a dice roll. Against Vaporeon, I don't want that. I want to for sure take it out of the match, but I had no choice. I mean, I, I had to go for it. So I'm going to hit myself in confusion here, and that's, that's just going to suck because he's going to get a wish off. So that was just so unfortunate that that happened. I really just... I mean, you know, what can you do? Anyways, I'm going to bring in my Netric, hoping to just take it out after this wish. I know it's not going to go back to full health, but it'll be pretty damn near it. So, Thunderbolt, but I mean, he used Protect. Got a wish off, and wish is going to put it not at near health, but that leftover is going to damn near do the job. So now he's got to take a Thunderbolt here, and Thunderbolt is going to put it in the red. Sadly, I do not get a paralysis or a critical hit. A critical hit would have been awesome. Scald is going to take my Manetric out of the match. Now all I have left is Entei. Entei is weak to water because it's a fire type. So I can't use any other move on this Vaporeon except for Stone Edge. So I got to rely on a freaking move that's notorious for missing. He's going to go for the Protect. Stone Edge is not going to do anything. So hopefully this time it'll connect and take it out. But he goes for the Protect a second time in a row and gets it. Which is, gosh, that is so ridiculous. So now it's, I mean, he got two turns to just heal up. Hopefully Stone Edge will still do the job here and connect. Stone Edge connecting and taking Vaporeon out of the match, giving me a much needed break. Thank you very much. Good game, Jerry. That game was a lot better than our last game. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Comment, rate, and subscribe. Hit that like button. Join my Discord, guys. It's awesome. We're all waiting for you. I will see you all later. Good night and bye-bye.